two words which the Prime Minister and the rest of the Tory party will be saying repeatedly. It will become nauseating. Over the course of the next several weeks, all the way through to the June 8th general election, is strength and stability. And always in contrast to what they'll frame as a coalition of chaos, with Labour at its helm and Jeremy Corbyn as a potential Prime Minister. But strength and stability for who? Certainly not for the young couple desperate to get on the housing ladder but really can't afford to do it. Certainly not for the parent who agonises about their teenage kid going to university and is worried about the debt they'll accumulate and whether or not it's worth it if they can find a job afterwards. Certainly not the young woman on minimum wage who doesn't really see much of a prospect for her future, isn't excited about what tomorrow brings. Certainly not the group of friends who rent a house or flat and are beginning to think, maybe after several years with rent constantly going up, that they can no longer afford to live in a place they've considered home. Certainly not workers in the NHS, nurses and midwives, nor the people that educate our young, university support staff, some lecturers and our teachers. Certainly not anybody who relies on the NHS to care for a loved one. The record of the Tories since 2010 in government speaks for itself. It's unmistakable. There's no error here. Yes, they're strong, they're damn strong. But they're strong against the weak and they're weak against the strong. How else do you explain increasing VAT, which hits the poorest the hardest, and tripling tuition fees, whilst cutting corporation tax, capital gains tax, even taxes for the very wealthiest? How else do you explain salami slicing, housing benefit, effectively a landlord subsidy, while refusing point blank to build more council houses and leaving us in a situation right now where Britain is building fewer homes than any point since the 1920s? And when they say there's no money for all these wonderful, positive things that Labour and Jeremy Corbyn would like to see, don't believe them. There was money for tax cuts for the very wealthiest. There was money for a completely unnecessary £3 billion top-down NHS restructuring. There was money for free schools and grammar schools. There's money for the royal family, but not for homeless veterans. There's money for sweetheart tax deals for some of the biggest companies in the world, but not to give credit to small businesses to employ people or to help them pay their workers a living wage. And don't you dare tell me that the Tories are strong on the economy because they failed in every single measure, even the ones they asked to be judged by. Look at the deficit. It was meant to have been eliminated by 2015. Two years later, it still stands at £60 billion. And with growth, well, look at GDP. Per hour worked or per person working, it hasn't moved for a decade. And that's how you judge this thing. Wages, well, they've gone down 10% in nine years. And the 2010s are predicted to be the worst decade for wage growth since the 1780s. That's right, since the steam engine. And similarly, don't give me any nonsense about stability. Since 2010, we've had Brexit. We had Scotland almost leave the Union, likely doing so in the next few years. We've got the issue of Irish unification back on the table, a possibly militarised border. We had riots in 2011, an MP shot and stabbed in 2016. If this is stability, Theresa May, what the hell is chaos? The Tories aren't strong, they're weak. And don't confuse inertia and a lack of ideas, backwardness for competence, because it's anything but. The strong don't grind down the poor, the strong don't manipulate, they don't lie, they don't exploit. They raise us up, they offer a vision by which people come together. They don't appeal to our base instincts, they appeal to our best ones. The strong make history, they do not surrender to it. So I've got lots of words I would associate with the Tories and with Theresa May. Hopeless, ignorant, brittle, fragile, stupid, arrogant. Yeah, entitled, absolutely. But strong and stable? No way. On June the 8th, we can offer something different. We can offer a different kind of country, where your happiness is at the heart of our politics, our politics. These people aren't fit to govern us. Don't believe that for one second. They are using two words repeatedly for the course of the next five weeks because they think you are stupid. Prove them wrong. Chuck them out.